fallout, smoke, women crying for their sons because their sons are not, Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up, free Judea, free our people, autonomy for Israel. You had Herod and Edomite and his dynasty, Herod's ruling, killing any potential threat, any potential Messiah. Then you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we learn from Josephus are not Jews by birth. No. Brother and sisters, they are there. We are not lost. We are scattered. We are original Hebrews. Let's go! All praise and be to the most high God is there. I say it. From my, I was a fortune to meet my grandparents. Whom from childhood had always let us to understand that we are one of the lost tribes of Israel. Okay. So, from my grandmother, Nigeria was always a united country, united by by culture and several predispositions in geography and history. To be honest, when we go for from as far back as we can think about it, all the migrations through Africa from the Middle East down to West Africa and right down to Southern Africa and up again to Zimbabwe and into Nigeria. And that's how Nigeria was formed. It was a migration that lumped so many people together and different ways of mig migrations came. The last that came was the Fulani migration. That's the last of the, of the menu. But that was how almost all the other groups moved into Nigeria. There is a sense in which all the languages across Nigeria are actually seasoned from one source. I mean, there is a book, there is a book in, 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 exist, in existence on when Igbo and Yoruba were one language. And reading that book, you don't even, on, on a daily basis, you listen to the two languages and you find that the root words are virtually the same across the board. And it is not only these languages. If you, if you pursue the migration to Southern Africa, you will find that very many of the languages in Southern Africa, those migrations that move from West Africa to South Africa before moving up again to, to Central Africa, all of them have common root words. In fact, if you, if you listen to, to Zulu speech, you will hear Edo words that mean exactly the same things across the, the board. So that when we are discussing how different we are, and you see a, a Kanu telling us that he's, uh, he's Jewish, the truth is that the Jewish migrations into Africa pulled so many of the different groups together. If an Igbo man is a Jew, then the Yoruba man is also a Jew. If an Igbo man is a Jew, then the Yoruba man is also a Jew. The truth is that all those migrations had common sources. And so... An ethnicity is a cult? What's up, Zion Dynasty? This is your favorite dreaded Israelite, the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. J.B. Zion. Y'all, show me some love, show me some love, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Zion Dynasty, where yours truly, I'm back in the fringed up flesh, about to hit y'all with another uh, 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 bang or all glory, honor, dominion, and power to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So y'all, welcome back to the channel. I welcome all my Israelite brothers and sisters, but not just y'all, all the sojourners of Zion, those that are not lost in the sauce, those that are supporting this work. So family, we're gonna jump into it. This has already looked like it's gonna have to be a, a multi-part series. I'm about to show you some clips, show you some research. Shout out to Nazarene Hebrew Assembly, and I believe uh, Will, son of Yah, for these, these just beautiful lessons that they did going deeper into a lot of the sources that I've showed you guys, but they cracked it wide open, y'all. They dealt with the Yoruba Israelite origin, the Yoruba Jews, Northern Kingdom, Ephraim, the fall of Assyria, the 722 uh, deportation and migration of Israel from that Me Mesopotamian uh, Middle Eastern region into Nigeria, y'all. So I'm about to start dealing with this in, in great detail. There is a lot of attention on a lot of the other tribes, but what I found is when you do history, the Yoruba are the heart 
of the northern kingdom that migrated into Africa. So y'all, I'm going to show you some sources, then I'm going to jump right into these clips. Um, if you guys do not have Derek Lang's uh, Ancient Kingdoms of West Africa, he is a UNESCO author. He has been to Nigeria ordered, oh, more than 15 times. He's contributed to so much African history, y'all, and he goes into the Israelite origin of a lot of these Nigerian groups, the House of Fulani and the Yoruba in particular. So, y'all check that out. Also, the Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora. Now, I talk about this a lot, but I can't emphasize how important this tool is. It goes into the Moorish era when the Jews and the Moors of Spain, when they were banished out of Spain, and they migrated into Africa, and it goes into great detail on so many West African Jewish communities, the Abba Yudea of the Ugandan people, it goes into the Ashanti, the Limba, the Igbo, the Yoruba, the Ewe, just, just all of it, y'all. Y'all check this out, because I'm gonna, I think they're gonna bring it up, but if they don't, it talks about the Benai Ephraim of the Yoruba. The Limba tribe, y'all check out that Limba video, lived in Transvaal in Southern Africa, they were a migrant group that, according to oral tradition, originated in Yemen, right? Now, this makes sense. Even the Yoruba's claim coming from Medina, coming from Saudi, coming from uh, that eastern area during the fall of the Assyrians. The Limba, now the Limba are a little bit different. They traced during the time of the fall of the temple in 70 CE. But there's so many migrations, y'all, of Israelites going into Africa at different periods that it can get overwhelming with just how many different groups went into deeper into the continent. Now, the Limba have some Jewish practices, a lot of them, y'all. We saw that documentary, uh, such as constraints on intermarriage, right? With non-Limba, they said, stay with your people, invest in the stock of your people. And they have a Y-DNA linked to the Kohanim, the Aaronic priest, right? The Y chromosome known as the Kohenmodal haplotype. You will see when they tested their E1B1, or they tested their DNA, it was E1B1A. Now, let's read this, y'all. In Mali, several thousand people in Timbuktu claim some, for, some form of Jewish ancestry. Moors, Israelites fleeing persecution in Spain migrated south in the 4th century to Timbuktu, a part of the Songhai Empire. When you look at the Mali Empire, the Songhai Dynasty, the Mali Dynasty, the Songhai uh, Empire, these were Israelite empires, I repeat. These West African empires, the Songhai, the Mali, were Israelite people by ethnicity. A lot of them practiced Islam, but you have to separate the religion from the ethnicity. Sometimes they're the same, most of the time they're not. Especially with our people fleeing persecution and being banned from keeping certain tenets of Torah, a lot of them adopted Islam. So among them was the, K the Kati or the Kahat family who founded three villages that still exist near Timbuktu. Askia Muhammad came to power in 1492 and forced the Israelites to convert to Islam or leave. This is why you can't let the religion be a stumbling block. A lot of them practice Islam, but most of them show their history. If they practice Islam, this can be linked to an event that happened where Islam was forced on Jews. So if anything, the more Islamic African tribes prove they are actually Israelites when you look at the history after the Jude after this Judaism became illegal in Mali in Nigeria the Igbo may be descended look how they try to be crafty in case we read it from the southern and westward migrations wait westward beyond the rivers of Ethiopia across the rivers of Ethiopia beyond on the opposite side which is West Africa they may be descended from these southern and westward migrations to the Gold Coast, to Nigeria, of ancient Shemitic, i.e. Israelite people, so we can't be anti-Shemitic, and later Jewish peoples from the Middle East into West Africa. There are three groups, the Beni Gat, who are said to be descended from the tribe of Gad, the eighth son of Jacob, Beni Zebulun from the tribe of Zebulun, the fifth son of Jacob, and the Beni Manashe. Okay, now this is Manasseh who um, was one of the two sons of Joseph, those two components of the tribe of Joseph. The other component, the Beni Ephraim, are different from these other Nigerian Israelite groups as they are strictly, exclusively living among the Yoruba, right? 
Now, in Western Ghana, the House of Israel community Sefwe Wiyawaso and Sefwe Sui claim that their Sefwe ancestors are descendant of Jews who migrated um, south through the Ivory Coast. Y'all, we got the Abba Judea that they say were founded in 1919. Ugandans who claim Judaism, who claim Judah, right? I ain't talking about Judaism like them Ish people. I'm talking about Torah descendant from the tribe. We got Somalia, the Hebrew people there. Y'all, we got the tribe of Rusape in Zimbabwe. You got Yemen. Y'all can go through all these things, but I just want you guys to know that they link that Moorish history, that Islamic history, to these North African, these African Israelite tribes. And this is the Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora. Also, y'all heard me quote the Cambridge scholar, Ulysses Santa Maria, that talks about the oral tradition of the Yoruba, the Imo Yoquayim, they came from Morocco when the Jews were banished from uh, Iberian Spain. So they're Moors, they come from Morocco. They migrated from Morocco, that Maghrebian region, and they settled in Nigeria. That's another wave. But this is not including the original wave that founded uh, the Nigerians. So you had an original fall of the Assyrian uh, deported Northern Kingdom Israelite Ephraim family that founded that region. Then the Benai Ephraim is just another migration which a lot of modern African-Americans are tied to those Negus, Negro people. Also, if y'all look at the Bible dictionary, it talks about the sons of Ham not being the Negro. I just want to throw that out there. Um, the scholar, Dr. Rudolph R. Windsor, talks about the Benai Ephraim that live among the Yoruba people as well. I'm just giving y'all this scholarship. Um, if you do your My True Ancestry, you're gonna find Yoruba Moors. I'm gonna put mine on the screen. I've done my African ancestry that links me specifically to that people. This is the majority of African Americans. I'm just doing this to show you all who we are as a people. Also, African Zion, Cambridge publication, a collaboration with Dr. Tudor Parfit and Edith Bruder. These are credible Harvard Ivy League scholars. Y'all get this information. Also, y'all have heard me mention this book time and time again. The Black Jews of Africa and the Americas by Dr. Tudor Parfit. It has a Harvard Emeritus Ford in it. Uh, this is Harvard Publication Company. Goes into the Yoruba, the oral tradition. Goes into Samuel L. Johnson, Muhammad Bello, which is one of the oldest sources that you can go to, Muhammad Bello, one of the last sultans, I believe, of Nigeria. And he talks about the Yoruba having come from somewhere else, right? And the name Yoruba linked to Jeroboam of the Northern Kingdom. The Black Jews of Africa by Edith Bruder. This is Oxford. Also goes into great detail on the Benai Ephraim. Uh, they're called the strange people by the local people. Now understand, a lot of y'all say, well, are there some Jews in the Yoruba and they're different from the native Yoruba? The Yoruba people, Nigeria was founded by Israelites. They lost that culture over time. The Benai Ephraim is a recent migration of these Ephraimites that knew that their people were there but they still maintain Torah. They have a Torah scroll and a lot of the, the people there today look at them as strange, but their DNA is the same as theirs. What does this mean? They preserved it. They're a recent migration, so they still practice Torah unlike some of their brethren that had been mixed in with a lot of the local ancient Hamitic customs over time. That is very important to understand. So the foundation of this people is all E1B1A, for the most part, you might have some ancient E, E1A and that kind of thing, but for the most part, the Benai Ephraim are E1B1A7A. Shout out to Dr. Yehoshua Benai Ephraim, Ephraim uh, for doing that groundbreaking research into E1B1A being linked to African Americans. Y'all, I know I'm saying a lot, but I gotta get this out before I show these clips. So, uh, also, so family, I hope that that kind of gave you guys a work of knowledge. There is so much research into the Yoruba. Now I'm gonna go ahead without further ado and show you guys these clips. Shout out to the brother of Nazarene Hebrew Assembly as well as I believe Will, son of Yah, for showing this going into detail on Derek Lang, the guy that I mentioned about ancient kingdoms of West Africa, a prominent anthropologist, very notable, incredible scholar that goes into excruciating detail, linking the term Yaruba itself to Jeroboam. This is very important because during the White House memorandum that I showed you guys when they uh, divided Nigeria up, they wanted the Igbo to be standalone Jews. But when you look at the DNA, if the Igbo are Jews, the Yoruba are, their DNA is the exact same. Y'all gotta understand. So what happened was the Yoruba in their name maintained the original kingdom, Oyo kingdom, 
that encompassed Gad and all of the other Northern Kingdom tribes when they migrated in that region. The House of Fulani still practiced Islam because like I told y'all, they migrated from Morocco. They were Islamicized, a lot of them. So they divided up our people to think they are different, but they are all Northern Kingdom Israelites. So also along those same lines, when you look at this ancient map by John Ogilvy, that insert that I usually put on the videos, uh, he talks about the Negro Berber Falashian Moorish Jews of Africa. And if you look at the map closely, you see Benai Ephraim on it. This is in the region of Benin. Benin was the location of the ancient Oyo Empire, which was the Eve Vio or the Eve people that dwelt there during that time of the prominent northern kingdom in Africa. In your book, um, Babylon the Temple too. That's one of my favorite books. Uh, I want you to go into, because you go into a lot of history regarding Israel along the west coast of Africa. Talk to us about that. Let me ask you this, because there's, a, there's two trains of thought that I've heard people say. Some people uh, have uh, made the claim that some Israelites, Israelites still are on the west coast. Some Israelites say they're all gone out of there. So what do you think the validity? Do you think that there's still some there? And there in Nigeria, there are, are the Igbos, right? the Igbos in Egypt, the Igbos. And, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, you know, Kevin, you know French then, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand what that was. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the in fact, uh, the word Igbo, Ebo, Ebo, I don't know if you heard of this, but Ebo, yeah. that's the way you say Hebrew. Hmm. When you say in French. Oh, okay. You say able. Able. That means Hebrew. Okay. You see? Gotcha. Uh -huh. So, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Israelites in uh, southern Nigeria and in the, the country next door used to be called Dahomey. Right. I've but, heard about Dahomey. Uh, right. Yeah. But now called Benin. Benin. In fact, in fact that word Benin is a con a corruption or contraction from the Hebrew word Benayim Ephraim, hmm. which means the children of Ephraim. Now that's in your book. Yes. I, I came across it. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you remember that. That's yeah, right. That's good. Right. Yeah. Y'all, there is so much scholarship. Also, when you hear me say things like Iye Ashe Iye, this is Yoruba. Iye Ashe Iye is where the scholars get Iye Asher Iye, I am that I am. The Yoruba still maintain this language. That's another thing. Also, if you look at their traditions, um, if you look at their eighth day circumcision, their naming ceremonies, they have the highest rate of twins in the earth, which goes back to Ephraim and Manasseh. They are the most fertile. The surname Ephraim is the most common in Nigeria. Y'all, there's so much, y'all. So before I go off into all of that, I'm gonna do follow-ups. Um, but now I'm gonna show y'all guys these clips and I hope y'all are blessed and with that, Peace, love, blessings. I love you guys with the Messiah, with the love of the Messiah. Be blessed. Shalom. Let's check those out. And when we go through this article or through this source, this author pretty much um, comes to the same conclusion that the Yoruba were of basically Israelite abstract. All right. Shalom, shalom, shalom. So Yoruba may derive from Jerusalem, king of Israel. Though it is quite unlikely that expelled people would adopt the name of their conqueror in the context of an expulsion from Mesopotamia, his name could reflect reminiscences of Nabalassar, the Babylonian conqueror of Nineveh in 612 BC, mentioned instead of Aronion slash Jacob in some Yoruba accounts of creation. The name Yoruba itself, however, more likely to have been derived from the name of Jerubim, all right? And Jerubim was from the tribe of Ephraim, all right? So that's pretty much what we, I will be, um, I guess you can say, mm, stating today that the Yoruba would be Northern Kingdom Israelites, specifically from the tribe of Ephraim, all right? But it goes on to say, designating that the founder of the Northern Kingdom of Israel, all right, continuing on to the next source or the next page on this, because throughout, um, like I was speaking all about Muhammad Bello earlier, he stated that the Yoruba were Canaanites and that they spent some time in Mecca. 
all right but according to the oyo yoruba chronicles it's referring to the yoruba migrating from mesopotamia rather than mecca and this right here is pretty much going to explain that it says in a recent and more faithfully recorded version of the dynastic tradition of the oyo the original town of the ancestral yoruba is excuse me the original town of the ancestral yoruba in arabia is not called mecca but madiana all right independently from johnson the oyo prince Adimi, wrote in 1914 that the yoruba together with their northern neighbors the people of borgu originated from medina one might think that both towns mecca and medina are mentioned in the yoruba tradition simply because they had come from excuse me simply because they had come to know of the people of the consequences of pilgrimages by their muslim neighbors this is only true to the extent that the geography of the near east was reduced in the minds of landlocked africans to those towns frequently mentioned in oral accounts all right it goes on to say oyo excuse me however of oyo it appears that neither mecca nor medina was the name retained by the tradition for the origin or for the original hometown but mondiana all right so again within the oyo it appears that neither mecca nor medina was the name retained by the tradition all right so according to the oyo traditions it wasn't mecca nor medina it was a madonia all right it says the royal bars of the oyo distinguish mondina from media all right excuse me from medina and they clearly localized the town beyond mecca all right so this was a town beyond mecca this was a town beyond arabia such a designation of a place of origin of the yorubas comes close to the tradition of the provenance of kabawa localizing the origin or excuse me localizing the original home of the people in a town called madayana not yet accompanied to the arab notion of the near east both madania and madania seem to be names derived from the arabic designation madina town or city referring to a great city of mesopotamia all right so that's why i said these people would have have migrated from Mesopotamia rather than Mecca as some scholars like to suggest because again according to the Oyo traditions Madania referred to a town in Mesopotamia right referring to a great city of Mesopotamia but let's continue to dig in on that next page it says in the context of a general reevaluation of the history of the central sudan it appears that the theory of a migrate of a migration of the ancestral yoruba from mesopotamia is in line with the history of their neighbor of their northern neighbors in the niger tad region all right so not only does the yoruba state that they migrated from mesopotamia it is in line with the other neighboring tribes around the niger tad region all right it goes on to say this theory does not postulate a the migration of people from the near east at a undetermined moment in time but it does re um repercussion from the fall of the assyrian empire and to the subsequent defeat of the egyptian assyrian army in 605 bc there's nothing improbable in the idea that these decisive events are reflections in the traditions of people whose ancestors seem to have fled in great numbers to west africa all right so dealing with the oyo um traditions it says some time ago it was recognized that the early sango section of the oyo traditions reflect an episode of the 9th century israelite history but this analysis of a single section of the tradition found little echo the following development provides a rough overview of the entire oyo tradition indicating that in fact the pre-jihad corpus of the tradition refers not to local but to israelite assyrian origin or israelite assyrian history all right so one should ask themselves why within the oyo yoruba traditions is there traditions or history revolving israelite and assyrians 
Why is Mesopotamia in their Oyo Yoruba traditions? All right. This is clearly an indication that these people, you know, are not native to um, where they are today and that they did migrate from this place afar. All right. So the first section of the corpus of the Oyo tradition concerns early Israelite and Assyrian kings. Recite, recited in the clear sequence, the well structured or the real structured royal poems of Oyo begins with Lamrud or slash Nimrod. Also, the biblical name of Sargon of Akkad. He is followed by Aduduvar, the legendary founder of Ife, and Aranyan, slash Aranyan, the legendary founder of Oyo. All right, we skip down and it says, as for Aranyan, the name ceased to stand for Jacob, the son of Isaac, also called Israel, the eponymous ancestor of the Israelites. All right, Aranyan's key position in both the Oyo tradition of origin and the Oyo creation accounts provides him with the characteristics of a singer or a central figure of a Israelite legendary, excuse me, of Israelite legend and mythology. So even within their Oyo traditions as well, we have Oranyan who is said to be Jacob as the legendary founder of the Oyo people, Oyo Yoruba people. All right. So the next king that is mentioned by the Oyo tradition is Alusa or Luso, who on account of his name appears to correspond to the Israelite king Joash. All right. Though at first sight, both names seem to have little in common. A simple transformation seems to have taken place. All right. So the theoporic part of the name Joe or Yahweh was replaced by the neutral El or Alu, the important element. While the second part of the name was only slightly changed, as or which means has given, was changed to Aso. Right, you see here, it goes on to say both kings are remembered for their peaceful and beneficial reign. The last mentioned king of pre exiled Israel is Olubogi, who, by his name, the second part of the name being a dialectical variant of Yaruba, may the people be great. All right, so Alu. Bogey seems to be equivalent to Jerubim the second. All right, and this is all within the chronicles of the Oyo people's traditions. Once again, may I add that? Continuing on, he says he was succeeded by three further Israelite kings reigning for more than two years: Manahim, Perka, and Hoshea. These minor kings are remembered in other contexts in the Oyo tradition as Mini, Paku, and in other Yoruba traditions as Hayusi. All right, so these are the Israelite kings that were mentioned within the Oyo Yoruba tradition. It continues stating at the um, very bottom, the deportation of the Israelites began after the conquest of the major part of the Northern Kingdom by Tigla the III in um, 733. BCE and it was continued after the fall of Samaria in 722 BCE. All right. It goes on to say it is therefore quite plausible that neglecting the last minor kings of Israel, Oyo tradition concentrates on Olugabu or excuse me, Olu Bogi or slash Jerubim II as the last ruler of the Israelite kingdom before its destruction and deportation of his people. All right. So once again, the last king that was mentioned in the Oyo tradition chronicles was indeed Jerubim II, right before the deportation of the people of Israel. Continuing on, we just um digging through the Oyo chronicles as of now. The second section of the corpus of the Oyo tradition deals with the exiles of the Israelites in the Igboho Hubor region. All right. It goes on to say within the dynastic traditions of the Oyo, it apparently corresponds to the local projection of the Assyrian exile of the Israelites in Hobar, region of eastern Syria, subsequently to the Assyrian conquest of Samaria in 722 BCE. All right, so let me read this again. Within the dynastic traditions of the Oyo, it apparently corresponds. So within the Oyo tradition, it's like corresponds to the same time the Israelites 
will have been conquered in Samaria in 722 BC, as it stated. Apart from the spirit, um, the spiritual differentiation with regard to the residence of the people in Oyo and the Ebo, the semi-divine nature of the early kings, as opposed to the, the human nature of all the other kings, introduce a distinction between two categories of kings who can be shown to have been first Israelites and then the Syrians from the pre um excuse me from the period of exile all right continuing on it goes on to say right here let's see where shall we start by confusion of sonship and successorship the son of Solomon the V was most likely his successor Sargon II and therefore, the tradition seems to have highlighted the difference between Israelite and Assyrian kings. So even within, you know, their Oyo chronicles, their traditions, they, they um, made a distinction or they highlighted the difference between the Israelite kings, which would be their kings, and, you know, the Assyrian kings. It goes on to say, indeed, after the conquest of Samaria, Sargon II deported a great number of Israelites, perhaps the majority of the population into exile. From this point, the tradition incorporates Assyrian rulers into a list of original, or excuse me, into a list of originally Israelite kings and thus faithfully reflects the experience of exiled Israelites. All right. And while I'm at it, um, even during this time, it seems like a lot of Israelites would have been um, coming into Africa during this time. Um, we have Ebos coming into Africa. Well, we have Israelites coming into Ebo land um, after the Assyrian captivity. Um, we also have Bantus coming to Africa after the Assyrian captivity. So that's why this story um, basically speaks so much credence and so much truth because we also have other tribes that we know came out this same captivity. Now, it goes on to say, contrary to other African people, such as the neighboring Igbo in southwestern Nigeria, the Yoruba never claimed an Israelite identity, all right? So they never even claimed to be Israelites, although they have this heritage. It goes on to say, although several authors pointed out the existence of Israelite customs among the Yorubas, they saw them as outside effects of Israelite influences and not as the results of direct cultural transfer through migration from the northern kingdom of Israel. All right. So rather than, you know, these missionaries, these travelers, you know, these um, people that was, you know, studying and amongst the Yoruba, rather than them just outright acknowledging them as descendants of northern kingdom Israelites, they'll be like, oh, they picked these customs up from influences. You know, um, that's, that's basically what they would say. As he just stated, he goes on to say more recently, re-examination of the Oyo dynastic tradition in combination with the comparison of cultural traits lead to the conclusion that direct links, all right, direct links must have existed between the northern Israelites and the Yoruba. However, owing the inc incomplete study of the Oyo tradition, this conclusion did not indicate the, the precise nature of the historical connection between ancient Israel and the Oyo Yoruba. From a comparative analysis of Oyo dynastic tradition and Near Eastern history, it appears that Israelites migrated to West Africa subsequently to the fall of the Assyrian Empire. All right. So they was migrating to West Africa all the way up to the fall of the Assyrian Empire. All right, I want to ask you all real quick, what does this sound like within the scripture, right? What event? It goes on to say, and their descendants survive as the core people of the present day Oyo Yoruba. All right, let me read that again. Israelites migrated to West Africa subsequently to the fall of the Assyrian Empire and that their descendants survive as the core people of the present day Oyo Yoruba. Indeed, Oyo tradition all right, Oyo tradition, all right, Yoruba Oyo tradition reveals that the ancestral Yoruba were mainly composed of Israelites who in the course of their history became influenced by Assyrian views of past events, all right? So again, the Yoruba will be descendants of these Israelites that found their way into West Africa after the Assyrian um, exile, basically. And here's that king's list 
that he was speaking on earlier, how they drift, um, put a difference between the Israelite kings right here on the left and the Assyrian kings. There will be um, Aranyan, Jacob, Israel, Ajaka, which is Isaac. All right. Omosanda, which will be King Jehu. Aluso, Joaz, Alogu, Buji, Jerubim. All right. And even out here, we have Hosea. All right. So, quick review. The initial branch of the Yoruba will have been a part of those exiled Israelites going into Africa, wandering into Nigeria to form several kingdoms. All right. This will match with the biblical narrative, which states in 2nd Ezra 13. Hosea, excuse me, Hosea also stated that Israelites will be beyond the rivers of Cush, right? Which was a prophecy, which was later verified or which was verified later by Israelite travelers, such as uh, Benjamin of Toledo, Eldad the Danite, right? Historians, all right, even Arab travelers and Europeans. A lot of people like to equate culture to ethnicity, meaning if we see a people today who aren't keeping Torah 100% or the way that they see the Ashkenazi doing it, then they can't be Israelites. All right. So that's what they say. They're not keeping no tradition. They're not keeping no um, culture. These are the things they like to say. So they can't be Israelites. But why did Israel get exiled from their land in the first place? All right. Was it because they were keeping Torah or was it because they were being a cake not turned? And again, I stated that I believe the Yoruba would be of this um, Nordic Kingdom tribe, specifically the tribe of Ephraim. And even when we look in the scripture, we see that Ephraim, you know, was, uh, 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 um, I guess you could say a stiff naked tribe. And he had a lot of, you know, whoredoms going on. And that's really why he was called a cake not turned in the first place. But let's jump to Hosea 5 real quick. We'll start at verse 3 and we'll just read something real quick in the states. I know Ephraim and Israel not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom and Israel is defiled. All right. So Ephraim defiled Israel. They will not frame their doings to turn to their God. All right. So they wouldn't even turn to Yah. They was in the land. All right, they was in the land of Israel and they would not turn to the Most High. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them and they have not known the Lord. All right, so this, the Father just said they literally, I mean, Hosea just said they literally did not know the Father. Although they are the children of Ephraim, although they are in Samaria, although they are in the land of Israel, they going off. Verse 5, and the pride of Israel do testify to his face. Therefore, shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. All right. So this is what we saw when the 10 tribes was carried up into Assyria. When they was exiled out of Assyria. This was because of their iniquities. Judah also shall fall with them. All right? And tries to give you the exact date this um or that is. And of course even keeping everything and Marzucha replied he exiled them to Afriki all right so according to Marzutra in the Talmud the ten tribes were exiled to we see that they wasn't even keeping everything right or doing everything right by the Lord while they was in the land all right but let's continue we can also verify that Northern Kingdom Israelites were exiled to Africa through other outside resources. Um, and the source we can use for that is the Sanhedrin verse 94 from the Talmud. All right. From the Talmud, the Ashkenazim Talmud. They literally states in here that the Gemara asked to where did Sanhedrin exile the 10 tribes? And Marzucha replied, he exiled them to Afriki. All right. So according to Marzutra in the Talmud, the ten tribes were exiled to Afriki, to Africa. And even we see that the Ashkenazi wrote a letter to the ten tribes in Africa, right, in 1880. If you go to um, this site right here, look up letter to the lost ten tribes to give you the exact date this um, letter was written and everything. And it says right here, 
where shall we start let's see let's see where i guess we can start at the very top it says thus send the dwellers of the land of israel who abide by the torah of moses um which is a gift and inherited portion to our brothers the children of israel the sons of isaac the son of abraham who revealed the belief in hashem they are our holy and pure brothers the righteous upon whom the world rests the Ben moshe servant of hashem who dwell across the river samboite also known as Yah, and who pledge allegiance to the king the king of israel who sits upon a mighty throne and who rules over the ten tribes whose settlements is in the land beyond the rivers of nubia all right so once again it has been verified that these ten tribes after being exiled from Assyria, made their way into Africa. And this would be a accurate migration map of the Yoruba from um, Assyria, from Mesopotamia, specifically Mandinia, all right, as they describe in their Oyo Chronicles rather than Mecca. So they would have came back down here. And even in Second Ezra, it tells you that Israelites, Nordic Kingdom Israelites would have been left within Jerusalem or left within the most highest borders. So that there tells you that they would have been migrating back west. All right. So this is a more accurate migration route of what they would have took into Nigeria. All right. So before we get to traditions and customs, I'm going to take a quick break and handle the sun right quick. Give me one, two minutes and I will be right back. Let me put something on for you real quick. Great. Nigeria was always a united country, united by by culture and several predispositions in geography and history. To be honest, when we go for from as far back as we can think about it, all the migrations through Africa from the Middle East down to West Africa and right down to Southern Africa and up again to Zimbabwe and into Nigeria. And that's how Nigeria was formed. It was a migration that lumped so many people together. And different ways of mig migrations came. The last that came was the Fulani migration. That's the last of the, of the menu. But that was how almost all the other groups moved into Nigeria. There is a sense in which all the languages across Nigeria are actually seasoned from one source. I mean, there is a book, there is a book in, 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 exist in existence on when... Igbo and Yoruba were one language. And reading that book, you don't even, on, on a daily basis, you listen to the two languages and you find that the root words are virtually the same across the board. And it is not only these languages. If you, if you pursue the migration to Southern Africa, you will find that very many of the languages in Southern Africa, those migrations that move from west africa to south africa before moving up again to to central africa all of them have common root words in fact if you if you listen to to zulu speech you will hear edo words that mean exactly the same things across the, the board so that when we are discussing how different we are and you see a a kanu telling us that he's uh, he's jewish the truth is that the jewish migrations into africa Put so many of the different groups together. If an Igbo man is a Jew, then the Yoruba man is also a Jew. If an Igbo man is a Jew, then the Yoruba man is also a Jew. The truth is that all those migrations had common sources. And so... All right, family, I'm back, I'm back. My bad, I had to handle something real quick. And yeah, I know uh, a lot of people considered um, the Yoruba to be of Judah. Um, especially the counting brothers here, but until somebody can show me some documentation um, showing that the Yoruba Judah, besides just saying it, then you know that'll be something different. But yeah, I know a lot of people say that the Yoruba are um, Judah. Um, we're going to be drawing greatly from a lot of different sources in this presentation, um, so I suggest getting a pen, paper, so you can write some of this down. Um, one of the main sources that we're going to be drawing from is uh, a scholar named Dirk Lang. Um, we're going to be drawing from uh, some of his works. Um, this work is uh, Ancient Kingdoms of West Africa, Africa-Centered, and Canaanite Israelite Perspectives, Origin of the Yoruba and the Lost Tribes of Israel by Dirk Lang. 
just before we get into using Dirk Lang and using him in his sources, using him as one of our sources, I just want to give you a little bio on him so you know that this guy, uh, this gentleman, he's he's he is a well seasoned um, scholar and an authority in this field. But anyways, here's a bio on Dirk Lang. Uh, Dirk Lang is professor of African history at the University of Beirut in Germany. He presents more than 30 years of research on the history of Africa and explains his recent focus on relations with Phoenician North Africa. Before his appointment in Beirut, he studied Arabic and Islamic history, as well as anthropology in Paris, worked on Arabic texts for four years in Cairo, and taught African and Islamic history for five years at the University of Naomi. Fifteen research trips to Nigeria, Niger, and CAD. His publications in three languages include two books, numerous articles in learned journals, and two contributions to the UNESCO History of Africa. He is unique in comparing African cultural forms with those of the ancient Near East. So this guy isn't just some couch potato who just popped up one day and wanted to start saying things. He's well seasoned. He's 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 a full fledged scholar. He's respected on an international scale, even making contributions to UNESCO. Okay, so he is an authoritative figure in this field. Well, let's continue. Um, the Northern Kingdom. On the basis of comparative studies between the dynastic tradition of the Oyo Yoruba and ancient Near Eastern history, the present article argues that Yoruba traditions of provenance claiming immigration from the Near East are basically correct. According to Oyo Yoruba tradition, the ancestral Yoruba saw the Assyrian con conquests of the Israelite kingdom from the 9th and 8th century BC from the perspective of the Israelites. And that's a quote from Dirk Lang. Um, Northern Kingdom, House of Israel. Okay. Uh, after the fall of Samaria in 722 BC, they were deported to eastern Syria and adopted the ruling Assyrian kings as their own. The collapse of the Syrian Empire is, however, mainly seen through the eyes of the Babylonian conquerors of Nineveh in 612 BC. This second shift of perspective reflects the disillusionment of the Israelite and Babylonian deportees from the, Assy from the Syrian Palestine towards the Assyrian oppressors. After the defeat of the Egypto-Syrian Assyrian forces at Carchemish in Syria in 605 BC, numerous deportees followed the fleeing Egypto-Syrian troops to the Nile Valley before continuing their migration to Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, so this is a quote from Derek Lang. And basically the, what he's saying is that the oral tradition of the Yoruba states that they migrated, they haven't always been in that place in West Africa, but instead they migrated there from the Near East, i.e. the land of Israel i.e., you know, what you would call the Middle East, which is really actually Western Asia, and that they also have an oral tradition that recounts the histories, but the histories that they're recounting are the, actually the histories of the Israelites, and with a somewhat uh, later shift of a, a Syrian perspective, due because they had been uh, captives, or they had, a, they had become a part of the Assyrian uh, kingdom, if you will, and began to see things uh, from the Assyrian pers perspective as as far as things were going after they were exiled in, uh, from the Northern Kingdom. They started adopting somewhat Assyrian perspectives based upon the historical narrative of the oral tradition. And uh, to the right, we have their map showing you the migration pattern or path uh, route that they took from the Middle East or Western Asia or the Near East um, into what we know today as the Yoruba territory, and um, you know, this is this is this is from a scholar. Like we said, this isn't just from some guy who just woke up one day and just decided to start making things up. Okay, Yoruba name origin. The name Yoruba itself is, however, more likely to have been derived from the name Jeroboam designating the founder of the Northern Israelite Kingdom. And that's from Ancient Kings of West Africa, Africa Center, and Canaanite Israelite Perspectives by Dirk Lang. Uh, Jeroboam, or in Hebrew is Yeroboam, Yeroboam. 
which is the first king of the northern kingdom of Israel, house of Israel. So you can already kind of see there how in English it's Jeroboam, but in Hebrew it's Jeroboam. So you can already see there, it's pretty much, you can see you're making the, the name there, Yoruba already. But just um, right there on the right, it's a map to show you um, in the green, that's the northern kingdom of Israel. A blue that and the purple uh, is the southern kingdom of Judah, which together combined constitute the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, just a little bit on that name, I, I gave a little visual there um, to help you navigate through that. Okay, so uh, Yoruba. And then we have there in Hebrew, Jeroboam, Yerubim. The first king of the northern kingdom of Israel, when the kingdom split at the death of Solomon and the ten tribes split off from Judah and Benjamin and the kingdom under Solomon's son, Rehoboam, uh, idolatry was introduced at the beginning of his reign. So unfortunately that did happen. That's ultimately what led to the northern kingdom uh, being basically exiled, going into exiles because they turned from the Most High. Um, all, it's also a derivative of Joseph's name. Uh, Joseph in Hebrew is Yosef, uh, which means Yah shall add or Yah shall increase. And then you have the alternate form, the shortened form of Yosef, which means he shall increase, he shall be added to. Uh, Yeruba. The Hebrew letter Yod as a prefix means he is or he shall. So basically, if you have the Hebrew letter Yod, which for us would be a Y, uh, it, it denotes that he is or he shall, you know, it's, it's, it's as a prefix, it denotes that he is going to do something. The word Rabbah in Hebrew means increase or add. So if you had the Yod plus, ra, plus the word Rabbah, so if you place a Yod in front of Rabbah, it would equal he increases or he shall increase or he shall add. Yor, Yorubah. Um, therefore, Yoruba in Hebrew means he increases, he shall increase, or he shall add, which is the same meaning of the name of the patriarch Joseph. And uh, in Genesis chapter 30, verse 24, we see where the name is basically first being introduced to us. And she named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord, may Yah, add to me another son. See, add. Uh, Yoruba is a derivative of the name of Joseph. Yeruba is also a derivative of the name of Ephraim, the son of Joseph. Uh, Ephraim means double fruit or doubly fruitful, which coincides with to increase or to be added unto. Because if you're double fruitful, it means you've been added unto. So there was just a little visual there for you uh, in relation to the name, but we can continue now. Um, therefore, so we could say Yeruba is basically of Israelite extraction. Either from, uh, we could say from Jeroboam, Yerubam. It's also a derivative of the name of Joseph and Ephraim, which means to increase or to be added unto Yerubam. 